Buonasera, benvenuti alla Casa Italiana Zerilli Marimò di New York University. My name is Stefano Albertini, I'm the director of the Casa. It's a great pleasure to welcome you back. This is the second evening of nice new Italian cinema events uh, in New York. And we have the great fortune of having with us tonight Andrea Magnani, who is the director of the film Easy that we are going to see. As you might remember, last week we had two films, a brand new film, and what is now a classic by uh, Zeffirelli. And we are very happy to close tonight with a film that has, uh, that has had a, a, a regard, uh, respectable success in Italy and outside. It had a run in about 100 festivals, yeah. winning 25 of them. Yeah, more than 25 more than awards, than yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there, <laughs> so we want, we want to raise your expectation, mica robetta. <laughs> Uh, is there anything you would like to tell the audience before they see the film? If you don't like it, don't throw rotten tomatoes to me. I mean, uh, no, um, I don't want to say too much. I mean, uh, because anything I would say, I will spoil the movie. So I don't know. I don't want to spoil. But yeah, but I just maybe I, what I can say is that this is a movie about a journey. A journey that makes uh, that that uh, Isidoro makes. Uh, Isidoro is the in uh, his diminutive is called Easy by everybody. So this is the title of the movie, and uh, it's a journey that travels uh, through half Europe from Italy to Ukraine. But at the same time, I think it's a journey that could um, uh, that can tell something about ourselves too, because I think uh, for everybody of us, um, everybody of us, we 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 could find some way somehow lost uh, during our lives and maybe as thanks to this lostness lo i don't know how you call it in english that we can find ourselves again so i think this movie is telling this a man who is trying to um gaining his back having back his life so the movie thank you the, thanks for me. the movie is about 90 minutes long and please don't leave and stay with us for the Q&A with Andrea Magnani. Uh, in this moment, all the seats that are not taken, even if, even if they have signed that are very intimidating, can be taken. Enjoy the movie. Enjoy, thank you. Andrea, uh, I'm gonna ask a few questions to begin with and then we're gonna open the floor to all of you. Um, the idea for this film, the, this character that seems also like a dreamer, an anti-hero, whatever you wanna call it, where did you get the idea for this character? Is it inspired to somebody you know? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> Me, myself? No. <laughs> uh, no. Well, no, I, I will say that I'm, I'm actually attracted by these kind of uh, characters. I mean, the so-called losers mm -hmm. in life. And, um, but actually, I had this picture in my mind since a long time about a man dragging a coffin. But it was just... I'm sick, right? Yeah. Uh, no, but we had other Italian films in the last few years. Yeah. With uh, road trips plus the coffin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I had this image, and there are other movies about that, but mm -hmm. usually this kind of movies has a relationship from between the yeah. person who takes yeah. take over of, of the of the of take care of the of the coffin and the dead man is inside the coffin. There's a relationship, uh, let's say father and son or something yeah. like that. In this case, there is no relationship between them. So I uh, was totally focused on, on uh, the main character. So to me, this is a journey of a soul, of this, uh, in, in the soul of, of Easy. And, uh, but I had, as I said, just a picture in my mind that was just a man dragging a coffin. But I didn't have a story. And I didn't have a story because I didn't have a character. And, uh, and then I, I found out that maybe an almost, um, how can I say, a depressed man like Easy is, is almost a man who is dying little by little, slowly. So I thought it was the best metaphor to tell this story. A man that is almost dying, that is carrying an already dead man, in order to have uh, the, in this coffin also a sort of a mirror for him. And uh, once I had this idea of the character, I had the story. The story came by itself. Did you write the script? 
I wrote the script, yeah. And uh, is there any uh, literary loser or cinematographic loser that you particularly like? Not necessarily that has inspired easy, but... Or many, many. Um, tell us a few. No, I, 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 I cannot tell you which one particular, because I cannot pop up in my mind now as, at the moment, but I'm, uh, for example, I'm very attracted to certain movies. For example, to me, this is also a Western movie, a Western in terms of spaghetti mm -hmm. Western or something like that. We are going to East, there is no horse, there is a coffin instead, <laughs> but to me, there's a lonely cowboy who goes through unexplored lands uh, toward his destiny. And in this way, if you think about Western movies, Far West movies, there are a lot of losers there. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get back, you know, to have a revenge, to have uh, their life back. So to me, Easy is a sort of a, of a movie like that. And why the Ukraine? Oh, because the money was there. No, <laughs> uh, no really, I'm not joking. Um, at the beginning, this movie was set, I mean, the, the script was set on um, the Balkans. So the journey in the first draft of the, of the script, um, when I was developing the script in an international workshop in Greece, it's called MFI. Uh, the first draft in the script was, the journey was going from Italy to uh, Serbian Bosnia. And, uh, but then I couldn't find any money there. And, um, and, and I set the story there because I knew these places because I was living at that time in Trieste, it was right on the border between uh, Italy and the Balkans, right? And, uh, but actually, where I was when I was developing the, the script in, in Greece, in my group session, there was a, a couple of Ukrainian producers with another project, <laughs> and they read easy and said, oh, we'd love, we love the project, we want to produce it. And I said, nah, <laughs> Ukraine is too far from Italy, who knows? And, and then I realized that the same distance you cover between Trieste and Lecce. <laughs> you it's the same the distance you can cover between Trieste and Lviv in Western Ukraine. So I, I thought it's possible. So I went there, I went in Ukraine, and I discovered actually the best location for this movie because uh, Ukraine has the same, uh, the same thing I, I like it of Serbian Bosnia, it means another language. And completely different and not even remotely understandable for an Italian. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't know uh, Ukrainian or Russian, you're completely lost. And, uh, and there's also a different alphabet, the Cyrillic alphabet. If you don't know it, to, to you it's like Arab, it's like uh, you know, a language that you cannot uh, connect with. And uh, Ukraine, what, is, what it's given to me more than the other places, was the huge, huge landscape and the nature so wild and uh, you have these flat fields, you know, and, and uh, or these huge old factories completely abandoned. And to me, this uh, augmented the, the, the sense of loneliness of the, of, the, of the character, of the lostness of the character. I don't know if I say right. Lostness. Sense of displacement. Yeah. yeah. Perdition. 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 Perdition of the character. And yes, to me, it was perfect. So the I went there the first time many years ago, and then I kept going and tried to... What is this workshop, again, where you find producers that give you money? <laughs> to so it seems actually there are some filmmakers in the audience. Actually, we have here in the audience one of the tutors, is Susanna. <laughs> Siron is, <laughs> is there, I think, yeah? Susanna yeah. Wave. Yeah, she's there. <laughs> so she's a, a mentor of this uh, workshop, uh, and uh, it's no, called no, the Mediterranean, it, Mediterranean it Film Institute, okay. MFI. And uh, actually, it's one of the fewest, maybe the only one remained in Europe workshops that are focused spe uh, specifically on, on, uh, on development of the script. I, uh, you have other workshops that you have more marketing or you know, pitch stuff. MFI is more focused just on, on, develop on, on, the, on, on, on the script. And I think but you find producers. Yeah, yeah, I found producers too there, yeah. Wonderful. And where is the uh, where is the school located? It's in the little tiny island in the Aegean Sea. It's called Nisiros, and uh, there Sounds is no like almost no tourists there. I mean, uh, it's a place of joy, and uh, yeah, because you almost make classes, say classes, uh, on on the beach in a way. Uh, yeah, so it's great, and the food is great, and everything is great there. Right, Susanna? <laughs> <laughs> but is it technically Italy or Greece? It's Greece. 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 
And the island again? Nisiros. Nisiros, wonderful. Um, now I think we can open uh, to the audience for your questions. And there is a microphone there. So if you want to ask a question, raise your hand here. So don't be scared because I already ate, so <laughs> I don't eat. What was the most challenging thing about shooting the movie in the Ukraine? Um, was, I think, the uh, similarity to the script. <laughs> we lived uh, in a very difficult situation, and um, we had n few money, not a lot, and uh, we got lost also, in a way. So I think this was the best the, the 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 best thing of this of shooting this movie. I mean, it was an epic adventure even even sh in shooting it, and uh, we shot mainly around Kiev in a radium of 50 kilometers from Kiev, the main part of the movie, and then uh, in another slot, very important, in the Carpats. The last part of the movie is in the Carpats Mountains in the western part of Ukraine, and then just one week in Italy at the end. So the beginning of the movie actually we shot it at the end. Uh, what about directing actors that speak a language that you don't know? Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was very funny. Um, I didn't have not only actors uh, with different but languages. the crew. The crew was completely Ukraine, U a Ukrainian crew. Uh, we, uh, Italians there were just me, Nicola, the main actor, and an assistant director, Marco. All the others were Ukrainian, uh, and among these 30 people, let's say just four of them that were speaking English. So and they actually could have said anything they wanted. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it, it I made trust me think, them a lot. You know, it made me think that, you know that Fellini, uh, the legend has it, but it's not a legend, there is a, a part of truth to it, is that in some cases, first of all, he didn't have a script, or if he had it, he never gave it to the actors. Just the day before, he would tell them, like vaguely, what the scene that they were shooting the day after would be about. Then when they showed up on the set, in some cases, instead of giving them their line, he would tell them, OK, you're going to count until 25, and then turn right, and then count to 36, and smile. He didn't even want them to know what they were saying, actually. And of course, then, as you know, Italian cinema at that time was all redubbed anyway. Uh, so there was no direct recording yeah. of sound. He could do that so because I there was a dubbing. The, the, the opposite of, of Fellini, that he was totally in control of these actors, uh, but the actors were somehow in control. Yeah, I couldn't do that because there were no dubbing. So yes, there's true. the original language there. So I just uh, trust them. And, uh, <laughs> and when I say just four of them were speaking English, I mean some English. <laughs> just one of them, the DOP, the director of photography, was speaking a proper English. Uh, so, w I mean, it was an adventure also. <laughs> we were like easy, you know, communicate was like uh, something emotional, not clear or logical. Uh, what about these phones? Did they really work? Them? Because the, the phones that translate, do they really work? No, no, this was just made on uh, <laughs> post-production. <laughs> and, uh, but there's another funny... I had, we had some of our best laughter with those. Yeah? With the device of the phone translating. Uh, and did you laugh when the... The crawl. Yeah. So you know <laughs> how long we took to take <laughs> this. So this crawl was jumping from one side of the screen to another without noticing the, the tablet, of course. And uh, so at the end, the line producer of the movie said, I have angry birds in my <laughs> cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put angry birds on the tablet. <laughs> Once we did that, so the crow was like crazy, <laughs> went there and was trying to <laughs> to pick to pick the Angry Birds on 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 the screen. So we had the, we had the, we had the shot then. Yeah. By the way, the director of photography is really good. Yeah, yeah, and he's very committed. Uh, photography for him is his whole whole life, and uh, I would say we are gonna uh, work together again, even if he's he's U Ukrainian and my next movie doesn't have anything to do with Ukrainian. With with Ukraine, we will work together again. Yeah. Can you tell us something about your next movie? Uh, well, it would be very different from uh, Easy. I mean, it's not a road movie. Uh, it doesn't take place in the Ukraine, okay? Not take place in the Ukraine, and it's mm, uh, mainly set in a jail. So uh, it would be also a sort of um, I don't know if you call it comedy, but. I like to go on this thin line between between comedy and more um, 
dramatic moments, or you know, we, you can think about it, or you can, uh, yes, yes, uh, and then we're gonna go th back there. How did you come to pick the n title "Easy"? With the title, yeah. Oh, because I like a lot the the fact that the nickname of Isidoro was easy. I know, but why easy? And because his journey and his life is not easy at all. So because of this contradiction, I would like to have uh, on the title the name okay. of the character at the same time. Should, uh, at the same time, the title yeah. and and the and the, and the easy word uh, was like. Ironic. Yeah, yeah. It Maybe makes a sort Andrea, of a we need to explain that Isidoro in Italian. Uh, you, if you abbreviate it, it's I S I, easy. But, but on the sound, on the, the sound same. It sounds of exactly easy. like easy, facile. Right. Okay. Thank you. And we have questions back there. I love the movie. Um, the symbolism of death and near death. The, the movie starts out with um, he's on the edge of a building. You seem to play with the idea of n death and near death, even with the old man in the cart, um, and why the coffin? Uh, I just wondered what went into your thinking in terms of uh, death and, and maybe resurrection or, or, or new life, but it was beautiful. Oh, thank you. Well, all the movies about the symbolism of uh, uh, death and new life. Uh, we start at the beginning with this attempt of suicide that doesn't work, actually. Yeah, so he doesn't succeed. And so he's forced to live again. And, uh, but all his journey is full of symbolism about, about death and, uh, and, and uh, having a new life. If you think at the first scene of the movie, uh, we find Easy sitting on a chimney. And close to, his, to him, there are other two chimneys, one taller and one smaller, almost uh, picturing a podium, an hypothetical podium, and where he's sitting on the second place, right? And he has also the jersey, say that, number two. And uh, at, the, at the end of the movie, we see him standing on another hypothetical podium made by grass and, and rocks, and uh, he's standing on the first place. And he's holding the baby in the same position he was holding the word that we see in the in the in the, in the in the in the in the first scene. So I think that that baby is a new life itself, of course, but is also a symbol, a metaphor of uh, his new life. And also this question that is quite ambiguous, and I, I'm ambiguous. ambiguous. Yeah, like uh, ending the movie with what what I'm gonna do now is like a, no, you are not we're not closing, but actually. He can say that phrase to himself because now he can do whatever he wants. Now he has his new life, on uh, and he's facing the horizon, right? Like in the Western movie, so he's facing his, his future in a way. Thank you. Yes, a question here and then back there. Thank you. Why did you put a Georgian in the movie? <laughs> Are you Georgian? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> ne and next question. Because one of the best food in my life I had was Georgian food. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. What and is the national Georgia dish? <laughs> then, uh, but uh, we can say hachapuri, but I can say also pakhali. I can say also... Uh, he knows his stuff, right? Yeah, lobio or something. Yeah. But um, no, I tried... Because Georgians were the... Um, in terms of truck drivers, once of the of the of the categories that of, of people that were uh, crossing all former Soviet Union with uh, they told me that in Ukraine there were a lot of of Georgian trucks uh, moving um, stuff and uh, and at the same time I had a very close friend to of of, uh, of of mine that was living in Kiev at that time and was is a director a Georgian director Zaza Buaje. And uh, his close friends was this actor, Bezo, uh, that is actually a theater director and a play director. And uh, yeah, we, we, we make a casting, and I see him as a perfect person. You wrote the script just for him? No, 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 was already there. Oh, there was a truck driver there. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, exactly. 
Thank you. Yes. Well, my question is the principal actor, did you have him in mind when you wrote the script, or was he selected after the script was written? Well, I uh, know. No, I, I don't use to have a, an actor in mind when I'm writing a script. I don't know why. I just have a sort of a blank face when I'm thinking on, 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 the, on the script, on the scenes. And, uh, but it's not true. It's not even a blank face. I have some something, but you know, pills of somebody, pills of, I don't, know. I, I don't have in mind an, any actor. It don't, doesn't work to me. But in the script, the, the, the character was like that, was overweight, was clumsy, depressed. And uh, so what I did is just find the best actor to, to get into this tight coat, no, this tight costume. And actually I found Nicola, and I found Nicola in a movie he shot, it was directed by a very famous Italian director, Scu Piavati, oh. and the movie was the Figlio Più Piccolo, the younger, the, the the younger, younger son. son, the younger son, and was playing the co-protagonist, and I saw in his face that kind of surprise that I wanted in my easy. So um, I said him, and uh, then I contacted him, and and the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and and he Thank you to you. he was nominated for a best actor award for the David Di Donatello. Yeah, right? he was nominated for the best leading actor. Yeah, among uh, the big ones. So and one of you know for for you that you don't know maybe what David Donatello is is like the Italian Oscars, and um, and for Nicola his biggest dream bigger dream is to win. <laughs> The David Donatello. I don't know why he has this weird dream. I mean, but <laughs> he has it. And when he got the nomination, he was so happy, so happy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Right back there. I think it's a beautiful movie. Uh, I have a question about. There's two songs being played, right, in the movie. Uh, one is obviously in a well-known Felicità, right, Albano, and but the other one, right, that's played in the cafeteria. Where do you get that? Because you could have known, not known that, right? That's you, somebody from Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah, this is a funny story. Um, I was looking for a song that could connect both cultures, Italian and, and Ukrainian. And uh, so I asked my producer, which are the Italian famous songs that you know here? And uh, he told me, well, Felicita, the first, the first place. And then he told me, uh, Italiano Vero, from by Toto Cotugno. And the another one was gelato al cioccolato, Brian. <laughs> and and then he told me, and then um, and then we have uno momento. And I said, what? Uno momento is Italian. He got, no, look, it's not Italian. <laughs> it's not Italian at all. Let let me listen to it, it, it. And um, and and I listen it, and I said, oh, it's wonderful this song, but it's not Italian. So, but I will keep it anyway. So we, we bought the, the, the rights for the, for, the, for, the, for the movie, and we put it in the, in the cafeteria, because I think it's hilarious. And uh, yeah, so this is the story of Uno Momento, yeah. <laughs> actually, it was written by, it's actually is a song that was written by a famous composer in, in uh, Soviet Union at that time, was uh, written in uh, the beginning of uh, the 80s, and was used for a TV movie very successful TV, TV movie in the Soviet Union. And, uh, and actually, at that time, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't have even internet. And so it just, uh, the guy was Russian composer, he was find the, the, the Italian words in a dictionary <laughs> and trying to make sense in the, you know, uno momento, uno sentimento, you know, to make like, <laughs> and I think it was great, I mean. <laughs> the, uh, words that don't have any sense. There, together, there, <laughs> there must be a sort of a, a subgenre of fake Italian songs in <laughs> Russia. Because I, I, I went to this show maybe three, four years ago with this fantastic Russian clown, but you know, super celebrity that does a one man show. And at a certain point, they started with this Italian song that was Blue, Blue, Blue Canali, BBB si sente il treno. <laughs> of course, I never heard it. The words don't make any sense, but all the Russians in the audience seem to know it perfectly. <laughs> and and to be totally convinced that it is the Italian yeah, song. Yeah, it's like that, it's like that, yeah. So why not? <laughs> yes, last question for the lady back there. No, but we like it for the recording. Thank you. 
so the coffin plays kind of a role. It's kind of a character in the movie. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the coffin kind of becoming a character and having its own will in a way. You were telling me about a little anecdote about it. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, somebody told me, oh, you know, a coffin is a character. Actually, it's not because it cannot talk. Um, but it's a mirror. It's a mirror for the main character. This is what I wanted, not to have a mirror for him. Uh, we can reflect on, on it. And, and um, so I think it was the best way to, to, uh, to go under the, the deeply on the personality of Easy, to have uh, a coffin on his side, because he w he's a guy who wants to die. And he has somebody who died. Actually, and succeed when he when he's in the building construction. I said, and uh, he did it. He succeeded in <laughs> in falling down. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand. You want to go there. <laughs> you want to go there. So when you shoot a movie, you don't have just one coffin or one <laughs> coat. You have like, for example, with uh, the coat, the green coat of Easy, we had like eight of them. Because one is uh, with graffiti, one is wet, uh, the other one is with uh, the shoulder, yeah. And uh, so coffin, we had like five coffins for the same reason. And uh, when we shot the last one, uh, the last one seen with the coffin was uh, in Ukraine on the river, going down to the river and he's waiting easy on the bridge, right? <laughs> so we were, <laughs> we were shooting that scene, waiting for the, 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 the coffin coming down from the stream, like two hours. Because the, it was blocking by the rocks, the coffin. So, okay, repeat it again and again and again. Action, action, action. And after two hours, suddenly, the coffin got the right stream and went down to the river and um, approached the, the, the bridge and were so happy. And when the coffin passed the bridge, I said just, okay, so stop. We have it. I turned to the director of photography and said, yes, we have it. And to the production designer, we have it. Yes, we have it. Everything is fine. And everyone was happy. We were hugging each other. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's and then after a couple of minutes, I was turning my back, and I saw the coffin floating on the river <laughs> behind us. And I said, look, Dima. Dima was the director of photography. Dima, look at the coffin. Yeah, what's up? It's good, right? Yes, it's good, but the coffin is there. Who cares? He said. <laughs> so I think this coffin is still floating somewhere. <laughs> We didn't, we didn't reach it, and um, <laughs> maybe it's floating on the Black Sea now. <laughs> maybe it's one of the reasons of the confrontation between uh, <laughs> Ukrainian and Russian Navy <laughs> staff in these last days, I don't know. Well, we hope that from this Q&A they will fix that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I would like to uh, thank, once again, NICE, New Italian Cinema Event, its founder and director, um, Viviana Del Bianco, and here in New York, Mila Sensi, for the fantastic job that she did in organizing all these events. And I also remind you that uh, on your way out, have a glass of wine, something to eat, and uh, let's celebrate Andrea Magnani. Thank you, thank you to all of you, thank you.